Deadly violence continues in the Sudan. As the country marked day one of a civil disobedience movement, it's a general strike called by the protest leaders who want the ruling military to give up power. Ethiopia tried to intervene, with its prime minister visiting Khartoum to mediate between the ruling military and the protesters. Our next report is more. After days of violence, bloodshed and claims of human rights violations, the streets of the Sudanese capital Khartoum fell silent. Shops were closed and the streets were empty as people in Sudan stayed home to protest the military's deadly crackdown on protesters. People are in a state of terror and great fear. All Sudanese people are uncertain. They are very afraid. People are unable to leave their houses. They are unable to go to work. They are unable to do anything. Everything is on hold. The situation is very bad. People cannot eat. They cannot leave. They cannot work. Even when they are at home, they are not at ease. You can be sitting at home and still be in a state of terror, worried about the passing gangs. But violence continues in the Sudan, with three people reportedly killed on the first day of a civil disobedience call. The Sudanese Professionals Association, a leading opposition group, had called for the civil disobedience after the deaths of more than 100 people at a pro-democracy sit-in. Security forces had used violence to disperse protesters outside the military headquarters in Khartoum. The civil disobedience followed Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed's visit to the Sudan to mediate between the ruling military and the protesters. The Ethiopian PM met with the Sudan's ruling generals and the protest leaders on Friday in a bid to revive negotiations. As a result of the discussions and the negotiations that have been had the entire day, um, we could say that it is moving towards fruitful discussions. While there were no immediate comments from the military council, the protest leaders have kept a couple of conditions before they return to the negotiating table. Among the many conditions, the primary demand is setting up of an independent international investigation into the violent crackdown on the sit-in. The Sudanese Professionals Association, which spearheaded months of mass protests, had aided the military in overthrowing Omar al-Bashir from the post of the president. The military took charge after Bashir stepped down. Since then, the association has urged street protests to continue until power is fully handed over to a civilian-led government. We are calling upon the youth to remove the barricades and the streets will be open. So we will live in peace and then we will rebuild Sudan. The civilian opposition has been in talks with the Interim Military Council over the transition to democracy. But the negotiations faltered and the military's crackdown on the protesters marked a turning point in the protracted crisis. The Sudan's military leaders have been facing increasing international pressure. The brutal crackdown by the military had prompted outrage in the West, while the African Union suspended the country and threatened sanctions if there was no swift transition to democracy. The Sudanese Professionals Association has said the civil disobedience campaign would continue until the power is transferred to a civilian government. Bureau report, Beyond World is One.